Hi, I'm Garland. We're going to do a walkthrough on this 2017 Georgetown. It's model 30X3. We're going to start with the entry door, go around the outside, and then we'll go inside and do all the inside features. First thing we're going to do is open this door. First thing you're going to notice is the door strut is being replaced. So some while, sometime while we're doing this, somebody will probably show up and work on this. But just so you know, that's not really supposed to be like that. You've got your screen door. The screen door has the little sensor on it that runs your steps. If you've had a camper, a, a motorhome before, you know when you open the door, the steps come out. When you close the door, they go back in. You also have a control switch inside, so when you're camping, you can turn that off so that you're not dealing with that every time you go in and out of the camper while you're camping. So, we'll carefully close this. As we go down this side, this little doodad right here is the camera that shows the right-hand side when you turn your right turn signal on. It's going to show what's down here through your blind spot. Come around the corner. This is your hood. It takes this special little round key. I left it out here so we could show you and open the hood for you. Sure, it's, it's a lot easier than it looks. There we go. Maybe. Okay. It doesn't open clear up. So you can get in here to it. You can see that you've got your coolant, your engine battery, you've got your washer fluid, you have dipstick for your transmission and your oil. Um, just all the stuff that you would typically find under the hood of any vehicle. So I just put that out here so we'd be able to show you that as we're going around. If you go down this side, you're gonna have the camera that shows the blind spot on your left side. I left this slide room in so we can see what's going on down here in all these compartments. This one's labeled says propane. So you've got your propane tank. You've got your on and off valve right here. This is on, obviously, that's off. You've got a little gauge. This is where it gets filled when you need to have it refilled. You will also notice it does not have a lock on this compartment door. All the others will have, but state law will not allow you to put a lock on a compartment door where you have the propane. This is just an access door. There's really nothing in there for you to be doing anything with. This one has your generator in it. You got your generator exhaust here. You got your little latches here. Take that off. You've got a start and stop button. You got your oil dipstick and fill. You have your air filter here. The oil filter is underneath, so it's easy to get to and change the oil. Um, put this back on. You've got this little saddle here. It goes over this. and then that latches it back in place. So you can start it and stop it out here, and there will be at least one place inside. Frequently there are two, so we'll find out when we get inside. This is just a storage compartment. Here's your docking station. Okay, so we have a number of things here to be aware of. If you get down, you can see here, this is a city water fill. So you pop that off, put your water hose there, and it'll thread on. Or if you're gonna use a water pressure regulator, you put that on the hose, put the threads of your water pressure regulator up here, and it threads in. If you wanna fill your fresh water tank, put your hose here and fill it. And this one is your black tank flush. It's even got a caution sign. 
the black tank flush for those of you who've never had one you hook your hose up there turn the water on goes in with pressure and a whirlpool action into the black tank cleans it all out the black tank is everything from your commode the reason there's a caution sign here is it does not want you to turn that water on unless you have your black tank drain open because the water is going to go somewhere and if it can't get out the drain it's going to come right back up into your camper so this is your outside shower hot and cold water you've got a little grommet access here but you can take that off to bring your hoses in and out so you don't have to have the door hanging open your sewer hose connection is right here it's a universal connection so no matter what kind of hose you get or where you get it it will fit on here and then you have like redundant gray water and you've got your black water so again the black water is everything from commode gray water sinks tubs and showers so that's all of that information there this is where you put your gas your engine it says gasoline only so that means it doesn't want you to put iced tea in there it doesn't want you to put uh, jello or diesel fuel gasoline only Okay, a big storage compartment. Uh, there are different things in here. You've got your grommet that you can run your power cord out of so you don't have to have the door hanging open. You also have a place here if you get cable or satellite from your uh, camping site. That's where you would plug it in. Up here along this wall, you've got your transfer station. You've got a light here. Then right here is a big 30 amp plug. If you're going to run everything off of this unit from your generator, you need to take your power cord, instead of having it plugged in to the wall somewhere, you would plug it in here. And then your generator will run everything inside your camper for you. But that's why that plug is there. That's everything in this space. Come around the back. You're going to be able to see your backup camera up there. So that's everything behind you. You can set it so that it'll, you can have it on full time going down the road to be able to keep an eye on things behind you. Whenever you put it in reverse, it's going to come on automatically. But you can set it to stay on for rear view full time. You got your hitch receiver, safety chain hookups. You've got a uh, seven way plug here. This is rated for 5,000 pounds towing, 500 pounds tongue weight. Got your ladder here that's good to get onto the roof. It's good for like 250 to 275 pounds. They want people to get up there and check their roof and all the seals, you know, a couple times a year at least, just to make sure all the seals around your vents and your air conditioners and things like that are in good shape. This, this is a little outside kitchen compartment. You got storage up here. Got set up for a little refrigerator. Let's see, it goes this direction. You got a temperature control here. So it's got a freezer, fridge. The thing to be particularly aware of is that this unit only runs off of 110 power so just remember that you don't want to put important things like ice cream and beer and hamburger back here unless you've got it plugged in or running off your generator so it generates 110 power for this unit got your sink got a little light switch here again just storage so that's your outside kitchen area the other thing that kind of goes along with it is right here you've got a remote propane hookup so you can have a stove top or a gas grill get one of those little adapter quick connect hoses and you can just pop it on there it works just like a quick connect water hose so we'll close that while we're thinking about it Here it's just, again, storage. This little access 
access panel here is to get to the mechanicals on your refrigerator. So if anybody ever needs to work on it or access it for some reason, you just release these two little grommet nuts here and it'll come off. This is your furnace exhaust. Someone was kind enough to leave the screen on here. When you run in the furnace, it will get hot enough to leave a mark. Also, bugs love to get in there and build nests. Uh, they are addicted to sniffing propane. So this screen helps keep somebody from accidentally bumping against your exhaust and getting burnt. Keeps the bugs out there so they don't come out and pester you in the first place. Here's your hot water tank. It's a suburban hot water tank, so it has an anode rod on the end of the plug, which is right here. Uh, that anode rod typically will last one to two years, depending on how much you're camping. Starts out as big around as your finger, about seven or eight inches long. As you use it, it gradually gets down to about the size of a toothpick. Don't wait that long to replace it. What it's doing is helping eat up any of the chemicals that are interacting in there to give you that sulfur smell in your water. It's not pleasant. That anode rod keeps it out of there for you. Since it is a Suburban, it has a master switch out here, on and off. So you need to have that on in order for your element buttons inside the coach to work. So it's a master switch for your hot water tank. The other last thing here, when you're draining this, Here's a pressure release valve. You want to make sure you release the pressure before you unplug that so it'll just the water will come out nice and easy instead of spitting and sputtering all over you. This is a great thing that they did with Georgetown. It gives you access to your water pump. Bypass your hot water tank in here. Uh, when you're winterizing it, you've got your winterization hose here that you put into your water to your antifreeze jug. You've got your little bypass valve for it. But you've got all the bypass valves and everything right here, easily accessible. Here, just a storage unit. Got a little grommet here that you can unspin that because you've got 110 outlets. So if you want to put anything out here, because you do have a TV, if you wanted to put any accessories to that and have power for them, you can do that and run your cords in and out there without having to have this door hanging open. So one of the hardest things on the outside of this coach is it tells you here there's a low point drain. And it, they are here. There's a hot and cold water line drain and there is also the drain for your fresh water tank. It's clear under there, so you may be able to see it. They look like three little spigot things hanging down there. Outside speakers. Outside TV. It does have a remote. It's inside in a drawer. I didn't bring it out here, but you can hit the power button. It's coming on, it does have power. And you got a picture. It's just working off the antenna right now. So on this key ring, you've got two full sets of keys. You got a couple keys that will do this, so it secures your outside entertainment section. You have two of your little round ones that do the hood. Anyway, I'm just carrying those along so that I could show you this and show you what was inside the hood up front. Again, this is just another access. You can see you've got all your fuses and connections in there for your coach. And that takes care of the outside. Okay, right inside the door, you've got your battery disconnect. So you want this little indicator light on, you hit the top of that button, that turns on all the battery things inside the coach. If you happen to turn that off, nothing inside the coach is going to work. What it does is keeps anything from draining a charge away from your house batteries. Um, so that's a handy thing, but just remember if you've turned it off, that's why nothing's working when you get back in the coach. Even if you've got it plugged in, all the power you want to it, nothing's getting in here until you turn that back on. So you have your awning in and out button here. You've got your 
entrance step button so that you can turn that off so it doesn't go in and out every time you do the door. And then this does your little awning light. It's a little strip of LED lights on your awning. So that's all of that stuff as soon as you walk in the door. Let me just move this strut. Okay. So off this end of your counter hiding back here, you do have a double outlet. It's like if you put up your little extension, you can see the outlet back here. Um, when you first walk in, besides those little things and switches down here, You've got a light switch right here that'll do the ceiling lights. You got a double receptacle here. So right here at your kitchen counter, you got two under the cabinet, two right here at the end of the counter, and then you've got a light that'll come on and off right here. The switch is right on the fixture itself. Right above that, you have another TV with a remote. This one I happen to dig out. Uh, goes on and off. Again, like I said, it's working off of the uh, antenna. And so you want to be aware that underneath here, there is a storage compartment and also the power outlet for this TV. You can get to any of the connections here if you decided you wanted to put anything extra in here for your TV, like a DVD player or a game or something like that. All kinds of storage down through here. Here are the other remotes. You've got a TV in the bed, red bedroom as well as one outside. And then also the one here in the main part of the coach. Just more drawer storage. Up above here, just big storage again. They also, whoever had this, was kind enough to make this list right here, telling you the fuel capacity, the water capacities, your outside height, and everything. So if you're going down the road wondering whether you can clear that overhead, this will tell you how, how high you are from ground to the highest point on your roof. So there's all that information that there was very nice of them to leave for you. Got a microwave. Does all the things the microwave does. I'm sure I can't tell you any more than you already know. Got your light for your stove top here. And you got the vent fan. This stove unit, it's gonna light with a sparker. You put it on light, turn your sparker. Once it's on, of course you can adjust the flame higher or lower once it's burning. This little rack will come off for cleaning or for service. Then you also have your pilot light for your oven. Works just like any pilot light. You put it in pilot, you push that in, you hold your fire stick down here underneath this tube. It'll light once it's lit, then you can adjust your temperature. It'll go up to 500 degrees and to broil. So that's everything with your kitchen area. The other thing right here is you do have an RV refrigerator. The RV refrigerator, what that means is it's, it'll run off of electric or propane. So it's got an on button and an off button. So you turn it on, you can select gas, electric, or auto. I tell people, turn it on, put it on auto, and forget about it. That way, as long as you're plugged in or it's running off your generator, it'll work off of electric. If for some reason all the electric power goes out, as long as you got your propane tank on, it'll find that propane and continue to operate until the power comes back on. It'll run off the propane. When the power comes back, it'll shut the propane down and go back to electric. So you got your refreezer, adjustable shelf, refrigerator, crisper drawers, door compartments, all the typical stuff. So that's all of that. This little grill area, that's just the return vent for your furnace. And we're going to step right through this doorway. And as I told you before, I left the slide rooms in so we could see what we were doing outside. 
Right here is the control panel. So you can run your slide room in or out. The top one runs the main living area slide. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to get around. It also makes it a lot more fun for you when you're camping. You don't have to turn sideways to get to the bathroom. So there's that one. And then the one that runs your bedroom slide. So with this particular unit, the engine just has to be off, has to be in park, uh, parking brake on, and then the slides will work in or out. So also here on this panel, you've got your water heater button. Uh, you've got your water pump. It has an Arctic package, which means you've got heaters on your water tanks down there. So if you're going someplace and the temperature is going to be below freezing and you're worried about the water in there getting frozen or getting slushy, you can turn that on and the heating pads on your water tanks will come on and keep that from happening. Here's your little monitor panel. Your LP gas button says the LP gas is full. Your battery's full. Your fresh water tank's about two thirds. Black tank empty, gray tank's got a little bit in it. So we'll check those and probably empty those before this camper goes out of here. So on this side, you can see that you've got a little strap here that controls this door access so that when you're going down the road, it doesn't slide in and out and bang itself silly. But you can close it there like that. It has a little latch over on this side. Here's your shower door. Um, it's a great shower space. There's lots of room to actually shower once you get in there. And it has this latch here. So your shower door will go across, which is great and it fastens. But to travel, you wanna make sure you've got it here and this latch is in place. Right across the hall, the commode and the vanity and there's a light switch in here for that you got a GFI plug medicine cabinet space got your vent fan manually cranks open got the fan button storage on both sides got the RV commode it's not gonna have a big bowl full of water so this little outlet here you push your pedal part way down and water comes in when you have enough water in you push the pedal the rest of the way and it flushes it this door will stop here and kind of latch in place and then this one will come across and then you've got total privacy between the shower the vanity and the commode right here in the center of your coach so you can hear it's got that little latch to hold it open and then there's your closed position and you've got the little hallway light right here which is handy to be able to turn on right above your head to see what's happening here with your monitor panel so we'll go on through here to the bedroom you got a little overhead switch right here for your bedroom lights you got a little access panel for the plumbing at your shower you've got that other TV I was telling you about and this also We'll climb up, and you've got storage back here. Uh, dresser space, outlets here, great closet space here for hanging clothes, as well as all of your dresser space. So, let's see, what do we have on this side? You've just got your bed slide, you got your reading light, you got a ventilation area here. I don't think this bed goes up. Well, it does, but there's really, let's see what we've got here. Okay, there's no storage there. I didn't think there was. Uh, down here you do have a, a double outlet, 110. And then around the corner on the side of the bed that's facing the camper, area you've got your sure you do 
breaker switches. They're all labeled. Let you know what's going on. This little compartment here are fuses. And then while we're standing here, you see this little table upside down. That little leg and the table, it goes between the passenger and driver's seat up in the front. So it's just back here right now for travel. Uh, it's always nice to have that little table there with you so while you're driving down the road, you've got your cocktail handy right there next to you. That pretty much is the bedroom area. We've already talked about the vanity and the commode. So the next big thing that you'll want to be aware of is your thermostat. So it's got an on and off. So once you turn it on, right now it's set for auto. And I hear the, I think it's the heater probably coming on. But yes, so mode is heat, but you can touch, every time you touch that it changes like the fan. Cool, that's your air conditioner. Uh, you can adjust your temperature once you get it in whatever mode you want it. You can set it on a timer. You can turn your furnace on or off. I just turned it off. But you can set your fan speed for high, medium, or low, or auto. You can actually set it on a sleep mode so that it just goes out and goes to sleep for you. And set the timer for it to come on and off by itself. If you want to just turn everything off, you just hit the on and off. So that's just your power for the whole thermostat. So I don't know if you're able to hear that on the, ca on the camera or not, but we had everything going. We had the air conditioner kicked on, we kicked the furnace blower on. Now everything's off except the furnace blower and once the duct work is all clear, it'll also shut down. Right down here below it is your carbon dioxide monoxide sensor. It's good for five to seven years. It's hardwired into the fuses. Uh, it's not working off of a battery, so when it starts chirping at you to tell you it's about time to replace it, you just take the two screws out, pull it out, there'll be wires in there, they'll either have couplers on them, or you just cut them, go get your new unit, put it in there, and again, put couplers on it to put the two wires back together, and it's good for another five to seven years. So here's your dining area, got your light above it. You've got storage under both seats that you can access from the end or from the top. You have seat belts for sure on this one. This will turn into a bed. Uh, it's easiest to do if you take the seats off. You see these two ledges. There's one in front of each seat. And then you release this handle here. And the table will collapse down. That looks like they had it released. So, table goes down, the back cushions go in and fill in to make the rest of the mattress up. When you're done, you slide it back up with that handle in place and that keeps your table up there. If you don't get that handle in place and you're sitting there, it'll gradually go down while you've got any weight on the table. So just make sure you've put it in the right position underneath there. So that's all of your storage underneath there and your dining area. You've got the blinds that go up all the way, down all the way, or stop wherever you stop pushing them. Obviously they're working on that strut. Okay, you've got recliners here. They have the parachute style handle, so it's right there. There are also seat belts on them in case people are using these seats while you're driving down the road. There are seat belts also on that back seat of your dinette table. Inside here, besides all the storage, you will find they were kind enough to leave you all the manuals for the coach and all the appliances that are in it. So that's always a good thing. Uh, I don't think there's really much else to show you here in the living area. One thing about slide rooms that you really want to always pay attention to is having the seats forward enough when the slide is coming in or out. If it's coming in and your seat back is in the way, it will just tear the heck out of the back of your seat. If it's in the way when your slide room is in, when it starts to go out, it actually has enough power to pop off this fascia board. So neither thing is very pretty. So just always try to pay attention 
that these seats are out of the way before you run slide rooms. You want to do the same thing in the bedroom. Just make sure nothing's in the way when that bedroom is sliding in or out. So that takes care of all the living area and around the outside. Uh, I guess before I stop on that, we should also talk about what's up above our head here. You've got your TV antenna. So it's got an on and off button. It also has a little power button here that you can adjust how strong you want the signal to be. There's also a release here that you can turn it directionally. So again, on and off, adjust the strength of your signal and adjust the direction. Like if you see this, how it went from three to four, that's telling me that it's picking up a signal a lot stronger if I turn that antenna a certain direction. Probably it's picking up Columbus channels a lot easier if I turn it a certain way. But that's going to keep your picture coming in sharper and more clear. Uh, again, you can turn it on or off there. There's also a big master switch for it. Up here underneath this center storage door. You see this little compartment here and it's got this little attachment that's tied in back there to the signal that you can turn it for antenna cable or satellite you can just adjust that and then it's going to help them determine where it's picking up a signal from so it's hiding in there you've got this bed that comes down and helps give you more sleeping space it works off of a key and an up and down button and a safety latch so it's like a seat belt latch. Nothing's going to happen unless you want to do that. And then I think that must be the key for it. There you go. So once you have the key in the on position, and some people put it on and just leave it alone. Other people like to turn it off so that there aren't little fingers playing with it as it's going up and down the road. But you can bring that down. I think that's it. Yes, yeah, so that's as far down as it will go. Some will come clear down. You've got to be careful that you have your seat backs out of the way. This one is going to stop here. I think you could adjust that also on the sides. But then they have cubbies and storage places up there if they happen to be using this for their bed space. That's how it works. And then you, for travel, obviously, you want to put it back up. And then, again, for safety, just snap that seatbelt latch into place. So that takes care of the living area, the outside compartments. The only thing that's left is your cockpit area. I don't know that there's a whole lot to tell you about up here that you probably don't already know. It's an automatic transmission. Uh, you've got the shade up front. Now, if your engine is off and the key's in the off position, it'll go clear down. If the engine is on or you've got the key in here and the ignition is in the on position, it's gonna stop part way down and just work like a little sun visor for you. It's not gonna let it come clear down while you're driving. Um, let's see, other things up front here. You've got what they call a battery boost. People wonder what that is. If for some reason your engine battery has gone down while you're camping and you are trying to get started and get out of here, if you hold that down while you're turning your ignition key, it will help jump start it from the house battery to your engine battery. You got LED lights on the outside, you got fog light switch, you got mirror heaters, mirror adjusters. This is your main light switch. And then also you can do bright or dim on your dash. Uh, this is your leveling system. Uh, you've got your parking brake and the release for it here. You've got your little latch here to adjust your steering column. Uh, your cruise control is all on the steering wheel. This little line of stuff here will run the set of uh, trip things and information for trip 
like it shows your mileage and how far you've gone and how far you can still go on the gasoline that you have there. Um, you're telling me it's 60 degrees out there and it's got 15,000 miles. So that's all that. Then you've got this unit right here is your radio. And I'm going to look and see, does it have, it's got mode. So it's, it'll do radio and I'm guessing it'll do navigation. It does Bluetooth. AM, FM radio, memory stick, all the stuff that newer radios are going to do for you these days. Um, Say, so yeah, I touched the Bluetooth thing, so it's telling me it failed because we don't have anything we're trying to hook up to it. Uh, you got cockpit speakers so that you can hear it inside, or you can do outside speakers, or in the center is off. Then you've got, again, living room speakers. You got a generator start and stop button with an hour meter on it. And then here's your dash heat, cool. Got a USB port, a couple 12 volts. This is a little speaker so that if somebody's behind you to help you back up or whatever, you can hear them through that backup camera. They can also hear you then if you're trying to talk to them as well. So that's all the information there. Uh, Start this. So you can see that when I put it in reverse, it's going to show you the what's be going on straight behind you. If I turn the right turn signal on, it shows you the right hand side. If I turn the left turn signal on, it's going to show you the left side. just do reverse so there's that so while we have the engine running I'll set the parking brake to run your jacks and your auto leveling system you turn it on you hit auto and it's gonna level up I don't know if you can hear it through the camera but we can hear the motors running now to run it down and then the next thing we can feel it adjusting you might have felt that through the camera <laughs> anyway I usually do this for people especially if you haven't had an auto leveling system before because the very first time you do this it's like oh my gosh did I break something so a lot of questions that come up about the leveling system do I want the slide rooms in or out to level it it really doesn't matter. Some manufacturers pick one way, some manufacturers suggest the other. The critical thing is don't be trying to run your slide rooms while it's trying to level. Um, let it get level and then put your slide rooms out or put your slide rooms out and then run your leveling system. Once it's all done the jacks down light will be on and all the flashing and everything is going to stop. And it feels like what it's done is pick the entire front end of the coach up to get it level. And it will do that. That's typically why they want the engine running because it pulls so much voltage to do that. So once it's leveled up, I always just turn it off, give the brain a chance to reset. And then after you've done that, say, well, you're done camping and you're ready to go again. Start your engine up, hit your power button, and then where it says retract, you hit all jacks, and it's going to drop in a hurry. So you probably felt that and can hear that through the camera. But again, that's the reason I do this, especially for people that have never had an auto leveling system. Um, it's just nice to know that's how it works, that you haven't broken anything. It's nothing to be alarmed about. And so when it's all done, you can see the lights all went out. It's telling you this and it's just saying, okay, everything's down. This is just a little power indicator light and then you can turn them off. I'm sure you can. So there you go. So that's everything about this coach inside and out. This little hole down here, that's where that little table went that I was telling you about that we saw 
back in the bedroom for storage. That's where I was saying you can have your cocktail right here beside you when you're driving down the road. And that's really handy, especially if it's a long trip. Uh, anyway, be safe. Enjoy this camper. If you have any questions, give us a call and we can probably walk you through most of the things you might run into while you're out there. Thanks again.